Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together God's people say hallelujah. Now I trust this finds you feeling blessed and happy in Jesus this morning. We are continuing our study through the book of Romans, and we're going to jump right in, and then we'll talk about a few things. So let's go to Romans chapter 4, and let's begin with verse 1. Now notice this. He says, Paul has been establishing, I mean, let's just back up for a moment and, and remember what we learned in chapter 3. Paul says in verse 21, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. In verse 23, he says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So all men, because they are sinners, need the righteousness of God in order to be restored into proper fellowship with God. But the next few verses tell us it's not by our works that that relationship is restored. For if it were, then we could boast. It's by his grace and his mercy, nothing that we have done to deserve it, Boasting is excluded in verse 27. Therefore, verse 28, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. But in verse 31, do we then make void the law because of faith? God forbid. We establish the law. Now chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then? Knowing what we've just discussed, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, pertaining to the flesh, has found. For if Abraham were justified by his works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. In other words, if because what Abraham did found favor before God, then Abraham would be able to say, look at what I did. That's what Paul is saying. So he says in verse 3, what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now let's stop right there and talk a moment about what Abraham did. God told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac upon an altar. Immediately, the story tells us, Abraham gathered his things, gathered his son, and made journey toward the mountain. Once he arrived upon the mountain top. He placed Isaac upon the altar, drew his knife, and as he was about to plunge it into Isaac, God stopped Abraham and said, Now I know. Now I know what? Now I know that you are going to obey what I say. You trust in me more than anything else, putting me before the life of your very son, and you see me as your very purpose of living. You see that your existence is in me, not in the life that you have to spend while you are upon earth. But notice, what was it that caused God to say, now I know? It was the work that Abraham performed. And this would seem to contradict what Paul is saying, because Paul is saying that Abraham was not justified by his works. But it's not a contradiction, friends. You see, our works are merely a reflection of our heart. And so before Abraham even had a chance to gather his things, to gather his son and make journey toward the mountain, he had already established in his heart that he would be obedient unto God. And it was at that moment that God could have said, now I know, but actions speak louder than words. So our works are verification of our faith. And so again, in verse 3, what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God in his heart, and he acted upon what was in his heart, what God had told him, and this is what was counted unto him for righteousness. It was a matter of the heart. It was his trust and his faith that even if he were to sacrifice Isaac, God would resurrect him from the dead because God had already told Abraham that in his seed, in Isaac, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. But Paul continues with this idea in verse 4. He says, Now to him that works is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. 
If you go to work for your boss, you expect to be paid at the end of the week because you have earned it. And so if we do things for God, the question we have to ask ourselves is, are we doing these things to earn a reward? But to him that works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. And so it would appear that Paul is saying here in verse 5 that it's better not to work and stand upon grace than to work and look at God as a debtor in whom he owes us something. But again, we must remember it's all about our motives. Do you remember in Luke chapter 17, verse 10, where Jesus said, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was only our duty to do. We don't deserve a pat on the back, some special reward. For we're only doing that which is our duty. I think that there is something that we have failed to mention, but may bring clarification to this matter. You see, in the book of Romans, there are three theological terms that are being addressed. Justification, sanctification, and glorification, which simply mean this. We are justified or we have been saved, if we're true followers of the Lord Jesus, if we've been born again, we have been saved at the moment of our conversion, sanctification, we are being saved on a daily basis as we keep ourselves surrendered and obedience unto the things of the Lord, and glorification, we will be saved from these vile bodies that we live in, and we will receive glorified bodies, even the body that the Lord Jesus himself received upon his resurrection. Now, there are three places in the Bible that we can go to verify this from the word of God. First would be Romans chapter 5 and verse 1, where we are told, Therefore, being justified, having been saved by faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Justification. Hebrews 10, 14 tells us that for by one offering, he, Jesus, has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Now, a more literal translation of that would be them that are being sanctified. It's a daily recurring process that we subject ourselves to as his followers. And this would be sanctification. We are being saved. And finally, there is Philippians 3.21, which tells us Jesus will change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. This is glorification. We will be saved. And this is why I think it's so hard for us to get our minds around, me included, of what Paul is trying to tell us through his letter to the Romans. Because so many of us want to stand upon a one-time event, we have been saved, and that's enough. But Paul is saying, no, it's a three-step process. You have been saved, justification. You are being saved, sanctification and you will be saved, glorification. And so as we subject ourselves to the law and the rule of God each and every day, as Paul uses Abraham as an illustration here in our text this morning, so the matters of faith must come from the heart. Do we truly trust in God? For if we truly trust in God, we're going to obey him no matter the cost remembering that Abraham received the word of the Lord and that led to his obedience unto the Lord. And so again, it's simply a reversal in thought. We're not working to be saved, but because we have been saved, we are working. We are obeying the laws and the commandments of our God. And we know when we are in error, we know when our motives are wrong, when we desire to take the credit, to receive the credit. Remember, Jesus said, don't even let your left hand know 
what your right hand is doing. Keep everything in secret so that God receives all the glory and you can not only boast about the things that you do, but you have no desire to boast about the things you do because you realize as we read in chapter three in verse 12, they are all gone out of the way, all men, they are all together become unprofitable and there is none that doeth good, not one of them. And so the only good that we do comes from God who lives within us. Because Satan, our arch enemy, he is a destroyer. He is destructive in all his ways. All good things, all good things, friends, come from the hand of the Lord. And so there's no reason that we should ever want to take credit for the things that we do because ultimately all credit belongs unto the God whom we serve. So remind yourself often of the three-step process, and most likely you won't go wrong. You were justified by the grace of God, having done nothing to deserve it for yourself. It was all God. You are being sanctified on a daily basis through the presence of his Holy Spirit in your life. And it seems much of the burden of sanctification relies upon you. It relies upon your obedience, your choices, your sacrifices. And based upon those choices and those sacrifices, you will one day be glorified. And that will be your reward for the choices, the sacrifices that you've made upon this earth. But even in that glorified body, God will receive all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Because left on our own, there is none good friends, not even one. Well, as we close today, let me finish by just saying Paul has laid his foundation. He has spent much time in trying to establish this truth within us. And now we are going to begin to move into the body of the letter, the real meat of the letter. And I can assure you, friends, that in the next few chapters, your soul is going to be thrilled with rapturous delight as you discover for yourself what being a true follower of the Lord Jesus, all the rewards that it holds for us in this life, you are going to discover truth that maybe you didn't even know existed. We are in for a glorious time together, exciting times, because these next few chapters in the book of Romans are among the greatest chapters in all of the Bible, so full of theological truth, daily Christian application, and all the spiritual blessing of what God has promised to those who would live faithfully before him. And so I trust and encourage you to join us each morning as we sit in the presence of our Lord Jesus and allow him to bestow upon us joy unspeakable and full of glory. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful that you're again with us. I know that this has been a bit tiresome, but again, I'm simply working my way through the book of Romans. I've added nothing and I've taken nothing away. I'm spending time only on what the Holy Spirit has pre-designed, and if we were to rush over it, it would be doing him an injustice. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.